I ask you please to stand and turn to page one in the service book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ yesterday and today. <laughs> Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power, to every age and forever. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God as we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done we can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, Banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A very warm welcome and happy Easter to each and every one of you. If it's your first time worshipping here, welcome, and it's lovely to have you with us. If it's your first time in a very long while, welcome back. If you're watching the film recording on a computer at home, welcome to St George's and it's good to have you with us as well. A quick reminder about the ongoing precautions which I'm sure you are all very familiar with. Hand gel, which I can see you all used when you came in, please use it again when you leave. Uh, the two metre spacing seems to be working, so well done. And please, if you're able to, keep your face coverings on during the service. The collection plate won't be going round during the service, but there is a box just by the door. We will, of course, be celebrating communion on this great festival day, but we will need to do it with particular care, and I'll explain that a little later. And to make things easy, please simply leave the orders of service in a pile as you leave. We still are unable to sing together, which I know is a great source of pain to many of us, but at least we are here gathered together to worship and pray on this festival. I'm delighted that Adam will be playing some Easter theme music during our communion and after the service, but we can listen to a hymn. You can hum along, or you can sing the words as loudly as you like inside your head. So please, just let's pause for a moment, have a seat, and I'd like to play you one of the great Easter hymns.
Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and our unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from all your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the glory of our together. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand of the Father to see our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. Please, would you be seated for the first reading. to the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. The Gentiles hear the good news. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How we went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. 
they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. stand for the gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia, I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Where is it you, O Christ? Please would you be seated. is simple. It's about hope. Hope that death is not the final word. Hope that God's deepest desire is to bring life out of apparently hopeless situations. But sometimes that hope hangs by the barest of threads. Background to today's Gospel is that Jesus is dead, thoroughly dead. The men have scattered and disappeared into hiding. They weren't even really present at the cross. They ran away, just one of them remaining with the women at the site of execution. They were dismayed, confused, afraid. 
They abandoned all hope at that point. So it's the women who carry that thread of hope through the time between the cross, the tomb, and beyond. First, that hope looks like a duty. Jesus, his execution was hurriedly carried out and his burial was rapid on account of the festival of the Passover. None of the Jews wanted to be involved with the dead as they came towards the festival. So the women head there with hope that they can do something for the dead Jesus. They carry spices in order that the tomb may be less unfragrant. But they go with hope. The hope looks like a question that the stone will be moved. They don't understand how they might be able to do it, but they still head out with their burden to go and do their duty. They are the ones that then become the first witnesses to the truth of the resurrection. And while we know from the other Gospel accounts and that Acts reading that the empty tomb gradually started to make sense, and we see Peter now proclaiming and preaching the good news, yes, the same Peter who had a habit of jumping to conclusions, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, and in the end, denied Jesus three times. Something's changed for Peter. Something makes sense. Something of the hope of the resurrection has taken root, and he needs to tell people. But our passage from Mark ends on a strange note, don't you think? There's terror, amazement and fear. So that hope in the resurrection, that hope that God brings life, is always a work in progress. Hope can be messy, and I think that's great for us to be able to grasp that and accept that hope is not fixed, it can be messy. And during the year that we've been experiencing, maybe messy hope is where we're at. This is going to be a slightly odd change of direction. We have flying squirrels in our garden. Bear with me on this. Now I know many of us have an interesting relationship with squirrels. The grey ones are the wrong sorts. They shouldn't be here. They should be somewhere else. They do a lot of damage. It isn't about the character of the squirrel or whether they should be here. It's more of a sort of metaphor. In our garden, we have a hedge with some quite large beech trees in it. And the squirrels like to move along the hedge rather than going along the ground. So they kind of jump from one tree to the next to stay airborne. And there's one point where they reach the last beech tree, and then there's a bit of a gap, and then there's a yew tree. And this gap presents them with a bit of a problem. It's around two or three metres across to this yew tree, and there are various branches in the beach where they can launch themselves. As I look at them, I can imagine that there's a 10 metre diving board, sort of like in a, over a limp, an Olympic swimming pool. And then there's a seven and a half metre, a five, and a two and a half metre. The squirrels have to hurl themselves into the abyss, hoping for a safe landing in the yew tree. When I get a little bit more sort of whimsical, I imagine it's about how much faith they have, or how much hope they have as to which height diamond board they throw themselves on. Sometimes they go high and sometimes they go low. 
This morning, I was watching one squirrel who headed straight to the top of the tree with great confidence, right to the very top, the 10 metre diving board, out to the very end of the branch, had a quick look and decided, no, that's not for me this morning. So he went down to the next one, the seven and a half metre, and did the same, had a quick look, no, that's not right for me either. And down he went to the five, and then finally to the branch that was the very lowest, the two and a half metre diving board. And he took a running sort of streak across the branch and launched himself straight off the end and landed in the yew tree. Now, squirrels are incredibly skillful, agile, strong, calculating. They always seem to be able to work out a puzzle in the end. But there's always an element of the unknown when leaping into that gap. They don't really know what the landing is going to be like. And I think we are maybe the same. When what we know or what we understand or what we do of our own abilities or our own skills runs out or reaches its limit, hope is the thing that's left. So thinking about the squirrel scale of hope, two and a half metres, five, seven and a half, right to the top, a ten, are you a ten metre jumper? Do you have a ten metre kind of hope? Hurling yourself off the highest point of the tree with certain faith that God has got your landing covered. Perhaps you're a bit lower down. For some, hope might be represented by a lower jump. One day for each of us might be different to the next. Like I said, hope is messy. Sometimes we may feel that we can barely scamper along the ground and jumping is out of the question. The irony of the squirrel jump is that the lower the takeoff point, the fewer branches there are to catch hold of as you fall. So when you're up at 10 metres, it may not look like there's more to catch hold of because all we see is the drop. So for me, resurrection hope is very messy. As those first disciples realised, it takes time and work and it's an active choice. It's about both the reality of this world and the reality that God promises in the next. It's not fixed, it moves, it can't be pinned down, and hope is different for each of us. Just as God loves each of us and calls to each of us as his beloved children. But the thing that's constant about hope is that it always creates life out of death warmth from the cold of the tomb. Whatever that death may look like, hope lets us fly. Hope enables us to jump into the abyss. And remember this, Jesus always goes ahead of us. So let's go and be a hopeful people. Let us stand to
to declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do believe in God the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son. Was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his grave. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. sign of hope at the moment. It's couples planning to be married during this time. So it's my great pleasure to uh, read the plans of marriage for one couple who are planning to marry here next month. I publish the bands of marriage between Hamid Aboudi and Emma Jane Helen Luke both of the parish of St John in Kingston, Wales, and having a qualifying connection with St George's Church. This is for the first time of asking, if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let's just pray for them now. Lord of love, we pray for Hamid and Emma. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their